Welcome back. In this session, we'll learn how to evaluate linear convolution using circular convolution. Let's start. Now, we know the linear convolution between two sequences means the linear convolution between two sequences x1 of n and x2 of n is defined like this where n is x1 of n and this is the symbol of the linear convolution and the formula is in by the square and so minus infinity infinity x1 of n minus k x2 of k so this is how we learn with the linear convolution between two sequences but today we learn how to use circular convolution to learn the linear convolution and remember, if the duration of this sequence is m, and if the duration of this sequence is m, then the duration of y of m will be m plus m minus y. Right? So this is the duration of the sequence of our two sequence between the two. But if you remember the circular formulation between two sequences. So if you say the circular convolution x y of n between these two sequences, this is the symbol of circular convolution. We know the output sequence will have only n points. Right? If we are computing n so point circular convolution, then the output sequence will also have n points. Alright? So this is the difference between linear convolution and circular convolution. All right, now how do we use circular convolution to use to evaluate circular convolution? Now let me give an example. So we'll use an example to illustrate this principle. So we we'll follow the same example. X1 of n is 1, 2, 2, 0, and X2 of n is 0, 1, 2, Okay, so these are the two sequences. Now, if we perform the linear convolution between these two, what will be the duration of this sequence? The duration of this will be 4 plus 4 minus 1 by the 7. But if we perform the linear convolution between these two, sorry, circular convolution between these two, the output sequence will have only four points, right? So how do we resolve that problem? First, what we'll do, we'll extend the signal as means we expand these signals to seven points. So we'll make x1 of n as seven point sequence. How do we do that? We simply append three zeros to it. So these are the appended zeros. Same way, what we'll what we will do to the x2 of n will append three zeros to it. So now this makes it a seven point. Then we'll evaluate the seven point circular convolution between x2 of n and x1 of n and this will give us the linear convolution between x1 of n and x2 of n. All right, so what we have done, then the trick is append the zeros we make the sequences of duration that will have in the linear convolution. This is the trick, then you have to perform the same circular convolution procedure. You don't have to do anything, rest will remain safe. All right. So it means we can write a DFT, we can use the graphical approach, or we can use the formula of the circular convolution. First, let me check the linear convolution between, what's the linear convolution between these two sequences? Now, linear convolution can again be evaluated by several ways. So the procedure work that we'll use here is the array method. So first we'll arrange x1 and in this direction, this is x1 and the x1 will arrange in this fashion. So there is zero, one, yeah. So then we'll perform the uh, linear convolution using the array method. Right? So multiplying this term by this, this will be 0, 0, 0, and 0. Then multiplying by 1, 2, 2, and 0. Then multiplying by 2, 4, 4, and 0. Then 3, 6, 6, and 0. Then how do we which term is the first, this is the first term, this is the second term, this will be the third term, means adding these terms, right? And this one will be the last term. So y of n, so the linear convolution y of n will be 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 
0 plus 2 plus 2 is 4. 2 plus 3 plus 7. How much is that? 9. 4 plus 6 is 16. And 0 plus 6 is 6. So this is our cell pattern. You can check there are how many points? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 points in this. So this is a 7 point sequence. That's why linear convolution will have n plus n minus 1. Minus n plus n minus 1 points. 7 points sequence. Yeah. All right. So let's use the circular convolution. So this is how to evolve. This is uh, the linear convolution. Now let's use the procedure of circular convolution to evolve. It. This is not my goal here. My point is check the final result here to check whether the final result is same as next right? So we'll use it and we'll evaluate the circular formulation between these two. Now we'll use the graphical procedure to evaluate the circular formulation between these two. Now what, what we are going to do, we are going to compute the seven point in this uh, circular formulation between these two. So what we'll do, we'll start with y of zero. How do we compute y of zero? We draw two concentric circles, right? Then we arrange the terms, means we arrange the values, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we are in quantum, we can do it again. So what we say, this is one, this is second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So on the same opposite side, arrange the other terms. So let me arrange x1 and on this side. So this is 1, 2, 2, 0. Then we appended three zeros. And then, so this is my first, two. this is my starting point. A is here this time. So remember, A is here. This is my A point. In the starting one. See, I arranged x1 of n clockwise fashion. So I will arrange x2 of n in the counterclockwise fashion. So I will arrange this term on the counterclockwise fashion. So this will be the first point is I think 0, 1, 2, 3. Then I have a three zeros. Next, what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply these terms. So multiply this with this. So multiply this term with this term, multiply this term with this term, multiply this term with this term, this term with this term, this term, this term, this term, and this term, and this term, and this term. So multiplying directly, we'll get y of 0. We have now, this will be 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus Zero plus zero plus zero. You can check all multiplication is all zero, so the final result is zero. So y of zero is zero, so it's clear here. Now we have also y of zero here. That is zero. So first time we to now to get y of one. So to get y of one, we can rotate one of the two. We can rotate one of the two sequences. But remember the way you have arranged the terms. You have to do it in the other fashion. Maybe if you arrange the terms on the sequence in clockwise fashion, rotate in anti-clockwise. All right, or vice versa. So let us draw the concentric circle again. So let me draw the circles again. Right. So we first to arrange the terms. So this is our starting point. And this is second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. And first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So let me keep x1 pixels. This is one. So I think I am it in the clockwise fashion. Two, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero. Now the other term, I arrange it in the counterclockwise fashion. So I will do the rotation in clockwise fashion. So this is our first term. So this will come here. So this first term will come here. This is one, two. Three, zero, and zero. Now I will multiply the corresponding term. This one with this one, this one with this one. So multiplying these terms together, we'll have y of one is equal to. 
So this is our starting point. And this is our starting point. So it's one multiplied by one plus zero multiplied by two is zero. Zero multiplied by two is zero. Again, zero again. This is zero. This is zero. So the first term is one minus two. We have got the correct answer one. So the again the answer is correct. Right? And then to get y of two. Get y of two. We give either one rotation that we have already computed in the previous part. Then we push it, right? Or give two rotation that could mean that we have used compute y of zero, right? So the we draw the surface again, draw the concentric surface, and this is our starting point. Then one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So this is first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So again, I have in the term as in clockwise fashion. Zero, these are the kind of zeros. And I will give one more rotation to this. So first term was zero, so this will come here. One, two, three, zero, zero, and zero. And then what I have to do, I have to multiply these terms together. Multiply this with this. We check whether I have done the correct rotation or not. So I have two is multiplied by two minus two, multiplied by two is two, multiplied by one is two. Again, remember this is the starting point. Then zero, then zero, then zero, 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 plus two. So it is four now. So y of two is four, and I'm getting the right around. Y of two is again four. Now next, what we'll do, you do one more rotation to this. I have to compute y of two. What we'll do, we'll repeat the procedure. Right, so this is my starting point. Second one, third, fourth, sixth, and seventh. Right, so this is one, two, three, zero, two, zero, zero, and zero. These are the three appended zeros. Then we will do one more rotation. So now zero will come here. I think if I'm doing wrong, right? Please check it. Please check the other one in the right one. So zero. So what I have to do, I have to multiply this with this. This with this. So this. Right, so multiply this y of three equal to three plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero one two three four right plus two plus two six plus y of three here that we have got using the linear combination. Okay, so if we continue this procedure, we will get the result correct. So let me do one more. So this is my starting point, second, two, six, 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 and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Five. So again, I will keep the original sequence as it is. <clears throat> and then what we'll do? We'll do one more rotation to this. So this will now again to the second thing. And this is one, this two, this is three, this is zero, zero. And we are please check it whether I'm going to try to run. So y of four will be now zero. This is our starting point. Plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus four plus six. This is ten. Right. So is y of four ten? Now we draw y of four. 
then y star. I'm going to get y of y of y starting point multiply these terms so I ask I will be equal to 0 to 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 2 plus I think I have drawn it incorrectly let's distribute it this should be the commute from the right, so one should be in the right, one should be in the two. Two is also in the right, so I have to understand the integrity. So please check it. The shift is in the right. Right? So let me move this. So one, one, zero. First one here, this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is one, 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 Y of y will be y of y will be zero 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 six y of y will be zero plus six and get to six is it six and then put six now we go back in here six and the last one will be zero let me do that also so let's see this thing now to y of six one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. One, five, six, and seven. So this is one, two, two, zero, 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 and zero. And then let's say this is zero, two, three, zero, zero, and zero. Please check whether I have on this ship party or not. So y of 6 will be 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. Right? This is again 0. Right? So this is correct for the this point. So this is how we obtain linear convolution by using circular convolution. Y of 1 is 1, Y of 2 is 2. So this is our linear combination of you. I hope you have got the idea. Let me end this session here.